So I've got a business partner called Simon, we're co-CEOs. And I think that um, you're seeing more of this now in businesses. A lot of large companies, especially in the US, have co-CEOs. I think with us, we've worked together under great pressure in the city previously. So we kind of know that the other person has a skill set and that they can deliver the goods when the pressure's on. Okay. And we also have very much divided up in the business what we do okay. and what we look after, who reports to us. Okay. So there's no real big overlap. Okay. I'm looking after this, Simon's looking after that. We talk about everything all day with each other. We share the same office. It's very sort of open in terms of the ideas and the flow. That's really important. I'm not sure with anybody that works for us, you can sort of say it's, it's ever just business because you know the, these are people I and mean, the guys that work for us and the girls work for us. You know, there is a personal relationship. Now, there is a point actually clearly where it's an employer-employee relationship, so you're always aware of that. Now, with a business partner, it's quite different. Yeah. So we have a relationship, and I think there's an inbuilt trust there. Yeah. Now, it probably wouldn't work forever. Okay. I don't think in 20 years it would work. Yeah. Right now, we've got completely uh, the same economic interest in the okay. business and its yeah. success. So it makes no sense whatsoever if you can take in ideas and listen to somebody else. It makes no sense whatsoever to think you know it all and to charge on. So when we're talking about business and decisions, we listen. Sometimes we have a debate about it. But typically, between us, we come up with something that works for both of us. The definition now of a business is broadening. So you've got businesses, you've got people at social enterprises, you know, charities. The lines are blurring because if you look at society as a whole and all the stakeholders, people want to take more of them in. Now, I think a society can generate revenue is it ever going to be a business? I mean, my view is if you're a real business, you have shareholders because you create value for shareholders. If you don't have shareholders you're trying to create value for, then you're more of a society, charity-like organisation. Who's going to, what is the motive to grow it? Is it in, in, in a company, it's profit, really. It's profit for the stakeholders. And profit can be defined more widely. It can be, you know, it can be how green you are. It can be the bottom line but it's about profit, that's what drives a business. And I've, I've found that anything I've been involved in that doesn't have a profit motive at the end of the day, doesn't work as a business. And also it's about the scale of it. So you can have a, an owner-manager company, a lifestyle company, or do you want to go global? Their science is clearly limited in terms of the scale. The honest answer is yeah. badly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm really lucky, right? So my, my wife is a, a dancer. Nice. So she, she uh, when we first met, um, didn't know what she was doing next week. Mm. Every, okay. every week. Okay. So when I came home and said, you know what, that business hasn't worked out. Okay. I'm going to think of something else. And I'm sitting in front of a phone yeah. with my contacts book thinking, what do I do next? <laughs> to her, that was like, well, I do that every, every week. Oh. So I'm quite lucky though, in a way. And now she's built her own business, which is a dance school. Mm. So she's an entrepreneur. Yeah. But never, so I had this kind of pressure in my mind, okay. but actually there wasn't sort of pressure from my, my wife, so to speak, about bringing home the goods so she can buy a new handbag. <laughs> um, That's great. I love that. But typically, it's, it is a struggle. You know, I've got two daughters, mm. and I, I do try and see them every mo even every morning and every night. Mm. Luckily, they stay up late because of my wife. She's, <laughs> um, so I do see them every day. I'm not yeah. one of these guys that goes to work when they're asleep, comes back when they're asleep. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it is tough. You do miss out on some of these things that you, you would like to have been involved in with your young children. Unfortunately, that's just a price you pay. But, but sorry, the point I always make is, yeah. you've always got to try and be there and be involved. I think the day you stop trying is the day you lose. So quite a few questions in there about, you know, I, I'm running it for a year, yeah. what can I do? Yeah. And I, I think it doesn't matter how big the business is, it's yeah. about having this vision or these goals, yeah. and you know what resources you've got. Yeah. And it's about actually trying to deliver those goals with the resource you've got, yeah. and if you can do that, then that's success. It's yeah. about what are your, how do you measure your own success? Yeah. And it's being realistic about that too, but also having some way you do have to push the boat out a bit. So if you achieve these particular um, goals, yeah. you've really done something quite special. I think that's it's being realistic because the small organisations and you're only running it for a short space of time. Yeah. But 
if you get in there and move quickly, which is clearly the need to do, and get the right support and people involved, you can change a lot in 12 months. But again, I've been saying time and time again today is that it's about trying to get the right people around you and involved that can actually help you move forwards. They're not just balls and chains sometimes. And there's no nice way of saying that. Some people are. And that might be because it just isn't right for them. It doesn't mean they're, doesn't mean they're anything particularly wrong with them. It is not for you.